Actually, hold on a minute. I may have... Uh... We have one more! Oh. You ready for one more, everybody? It's anticlimactic, but yeah. Well, yeah, I just realized I had one more. And uh, uh, according to this thing right here, it is a Shakespearean sonnet. Oh, goodness. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Tis a curious thing, this dude called Rob. There's no words to describe his cluelessness. A chubby, bloated, imbecilic slob whose time on Raw was simply just a mess. More disturbing than Heenan dressed in drag, Pettengill didn't suck as much as him. To the fans, Bartlett's just a punching bag, and yet he's never been inside a gym. Awful from the very first episode, his comments were dumb and plain judgmental. Whose idea was it to hire this fat chode? Wow, that's one big butted <laughs> Oriental. Been no one worse than Bartlett ever since, but he really did a hell of a Vince. Holy smokes! That was that was a sonnet. That was a sonnet, all right. That makes it art. Excuse me, is this Rob Bartlett? <clears throat> Guilty as ch Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I'm good, man. I can't see you guys. I can only see myself, which oh. is not really a well, pleasant thing. We all look just like you. <laughs> Actually, we all do, yes. Just just imagine yourself times uh, times four. Oh, um, I, I would really like to see that. But I, I, I don't know what to say about this outpouring of of disgust and love simultaneously <laughs> between the music and the poems. I mean, I mean, to actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> it, it is, it is uh, quite incredible that we did, uh, we did a song contest and a poetry contest, and I believe every poem was negative and every yeah. song was positive. Including mine, by the way. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> must be something to be said for these creative people. But thank you, Emilio. I mean, uh, I you've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now, and um, lucky fella, I'm uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. I need a pants mint at this point. That's how excited I am. Um, I don't know what to say. This is just way too much attention and and too many accolades for for one boy to have in one night. <laughs> Well, Rob, what what do you what do you remember from your days at Monday Night Raw? As you as you relive these Raw episodes, I don't think you probably ever relived them. I mean, oh, uh, believe me, every night I relive them. Oh. Every night, I just over and over, <clears throat> I, I torture myself with. Uh, I mean, it's just it was a great time. I I had a blast. Oh, good. Uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I worked with some of the greatest people on the planet. I mean. Bobby the Brain Heenan was just one of the greatest guys, and and Randy, two of the greatest guys you'd ever want to meet, could not be more supportive, uh, and they could not be more talented. Heenan, by the way, was a real funny motherfucker. He really was. I mean, he could have done a stand-up act. Matter of fact, I tried to encourage um, him and and Gorilla to do a like an Abbott and Costello thing together because they were great. They mm -hmm. were gold together, the two of them. Um, so, but it was just great. I mean, Kevin Dunn, the producer, was just a, a terrific guy. And Vince, I mean, you got to give Vince a lot of credit for for taking that leap, you know, for for taking that risk. I mean, he's the P.T. Barnum of our age. He's a guy who really knows how to work the public. He knows his product. He knows his audience. And, you know, he, he took a chance. I just, I, I wish I had been better. Well, you know, the, the thing that we've noticed watching those shows is that, uh, man, Vince looked like he was having the time of his life. He looked like he was having fun, and he'd be laughing, and there was, like, so much creativity in those early runs. The matches weren't necessarily, you know, all that good. There were, there were some bad and boring matches. But uh, as far as, like, you know, Vince on commentary and you, you three, your, your Vince impression that week he was gone is, is Vinny's favorite. And, uh, Best thing I ever saw. Yeah. What do you, what do you remember from that day? That that was one of the things that just kind of came to me. I mean, he was, I had heard, I guess, the, the previous week that he wasn't going to be there. And I got this stupid idea, which actually was a better idea than, than showing up as Elvis and everyone thinking I was trying to do Honky Tonk Man. Um, <laughs> was, uh, I said, let me, let me try and do him. So I went to the, the, the makeup person, uh, I think her name is Sharon. I said, do you think you can, you know, make me look like Vince? 
and so I'll get a tux and I'll, I'll get some shoulder pads and you know I'll, I'll, can you do the hair and can you give me the big Vince lips and and she did and uh, I, st- I stood there with holding the microphone with the one hand behind my back and mm-hmm. I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the the tone of the voice you know so <laughs> the entire hour much to the consternation of, of Bobby and, and Gorilla was <laughs> He still got it. <laughs> he still got it. And it was uh, it was just a lot, a lot of fun. And when it was over, the crew went nuts because nobody had ever tried, I guess, were attempted or had the balls to to make fun of the boss. And um, the following week, I show up to the Manhattan Center, and they, it was like one of the ante rooms where the like the green room where they would have the the buffet, you know, the the craft service of the the grilled chicken and steamed vegetables and you know, a big bowl full of Ico Pro bars. And, oh. um, <laughs> um, I think uh, Undertaker was squatting in a corner of the room the way he did every single time he was he was on the show, staring straight ahead for at least an hour before air. Just like, I don't know if he was meditating or what, but it was really, really scary. Not as scary as Bam Bam Bigelow, who'd be in the other corner, like chewing on car batteries. Um, but all of a sudden, the whole crew comes in and everyone's like, kind of looking around they're all kind of like not looking at me and i'm wondering something's going on you know and uh everybody's kind of talking whatever and there's a little tension and vince comes into the room and you could hear a pin drop and he turns and he goes bartlett you're fired (laughs) and everybody laughed it was like a lot a lot of fun um uh, the following week i show up to do the show and there's nobody there. Oh no! They had, I guess, I don't know if they they had, they must have been up at the. I don't remember because it was so long ago. But they must have gone up to the Mid Hudson Civic Center mm-hmm. uh, without telling me. But there was a guy with a camera, and I think there's this a shot, if I'm remembering it correctly, a shot of me in the in the empty house. <laughs> With the microphone, and it was his way of getting back at me. Um, so, so how did the the end of the how did the end of the run come about? How did Raw thirteen come about? When did you know that this was going to be it for Rob Bartlett on this show? After the um, Luna Vachon sensational Sherry, when I got my clothes ripped off, incident happened, and I thought I was I had really like broken through a ceiling at that point because all of a sudden the fans were like all excited. Um, you know, they're all lined up. All of a sudden they wanted my autograph. I said, wow, I got something going now. I got something great. And uh, Vince was not not all that pleased with how it all went down. And and um, I, I don't know if he thought I did too much or, or didn't do enough or whatever it was. But I think it was just apparent to everybody that it was just not going to work. You know, um, and so I think it was after after 13, I uh, I, I called the, 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 that Tuesday morning. I called Kevin Dunn. I said, I said, look, man, I said, this has been great. I love you guys, but I really don't think this is working. And, you know, I was most concerned about my son, who, by the way, is who turned me on to you guys. Um, we got to put him over. Yeah. Oh, Bartlett yeah. Junior. I, yeah. Uh, Sean, Sean, uh, I was concerned about how Sean was going to feel, you know, because he had gotten to meet all the guys and, you know, it was like a big deal. He got to hold the belt and Madison Square Garden. And, you know, th- th- that was another moment that, uh, that they never taped it, I don't think, which w- it's another story, which we can get into if we have time. But I said this, I said, Sean, I said, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be doing raw anymore. Do you mind? And uh, eight years old, he says, you know, Dad. It really wasn't a great fit. <laughs> wow. So, wow. Even he knew. So it was clear. So, uh, you know, Kevin was like disappointed. You know, he's like, man, I wish I could keep you on. Because I had pitched a couple of ideas. I had written a pilot for a wrestling sitcom called The Turnbuckles, um, <laughs> where, where the bed was an actual ring. Um you know, and the whole family, the, they would all constantly, you know, the, the way the normal sitcom would go, but they would always be wrestling. They would just, no matter what they were talking about, you know, doing homework, or whatever, they would be, you know, giving each other pile drivers and, and shit. And then I had another idea to do almost like a Saturday Night Live 
using the wrestlers. And I had written a sketch for Yokozuna, which, by the way, when I said Yokozuma, that was supposed to have been a joke. But everyone just assumed I had no idea who the guy's name was. Um, Dude, his own but, manager used to keep calling him Yokozuma. Mr. Fuji well, kept calling him Yokozuma. Right. Well, that was that was what I was trying to kind of like feed into that. But yeah. I don't think anybody really got that. But uh, but I, you know, Yokozuna was, you know, the 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 butt but um boom of my the very first words I said on Raw, which is, well, Vince, that's one big butted Oriental, and that is still hanging, you know, in in the air. Decades later, the Manhattan Center. Decades later. Um, so I had written this sketch for Yokozuma at the time. There was a a car commercial. Uh, I think it was for Cadillac, where they dropped a ball bearing on a Cadillac and it rolled over all the contours of the of the oh, car. Yeah. And, I, and I wrote this sketch where you dropped a, a a ball bearing on Yokozuna, and it went went all the way around his body, and then finally went down and back into the back part of his diaper, and then he. You know, it's like gets like startled, whatever, and then I jump on his back and he trots away as though I'd started the car. So it was like a bunch of that. Kevin was disappointed; he wanted to do all that stuff, and uh, but uh, it was a great experiment. I mean, the the, the way it came about, I had done a benefit for Connecticut Special Olympics, and that's one of the things you got to hand it to this that they they do more work for char charity, especially children's charities. I've never been associated with any organization that does as much for charity as as uh, as WWF at the time or, or WWE now and and um he was in the audience and I was doing you know, I did my stand up and I did a, an auction and he was wearing a three piece velour peach colored suit and I did about 20 minutes on the suit um, I just murdered him. Just like, you know, Vince, that's a really nice suit. Does it come in any heterosexual colors? I mean, it was like, really, I just hammered the hell out of him. And and two days later, I get a phone call um, from I mean, his uh, assistant saying, you know, Vince McMahon called and wants you to call him. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I have to pay the piper. He says, uh, Martin, how would you like to be on live TV every Monday night? And that was it. Um, the rest is I, history. The like rest is, as they say, history. Um, it's just, it was a great time. I mean, it's just, I, I do look fondly about the, it was just a crazy, crazy situation. I mean, I wouldn't know what to expect, you know, until the, the, the pre-show meeting. I mean, literally 15 minutes before air, I would find out what was going on. Well, quite frankly, Rob, I don't think much has changed. <laughs> in uh, the, the following 30 years. In fact, I think there would have been some shows you would have been on the air, you would have found out what was going on. So yeah, it just, uh, but it was great. I mean, the people were great. And, um, and it was, you know, it was fun. How, how could you not, you know, how could you not get into that, that circus atmosphere? You know, it was just, it was just crazy. Do you, you ever know? hear from them nowadays? No, never, man. No, unfortunately, God. I've never been invited to any of the anniversaries. I've never, I mean, I mean, I actually go to Madison Square Garden to buy tickets, and they won't let me. I mean, oh, it's just, <laughs> horrible. Um, that that the, the Madison Square Garden uh, thing was, I thought, one of my better moments. Um, giant. Oh, by the way, I just want to take credit for something. I named Friar Ferguson. Mm. No! I did. That was my idea. I named Friar Ferguson. This guy was going to wrestle that night. They still hadn't given him a name. Oh so <laughs> I, I named Friar Ferguson. And oh. just before air, I leaned over and I said, you got to be careful of that robe because, you know, you flip the wrong way. Everybody's going to see, you know, the Holy Grail. And... Um, and so when he was in the ring, he actually... <laughs> he did. He started slashing yeah. the... Uh, the yeah. I was like, what yeah. in the hell's yeah. going on here? So yeah. you're responsible for Friar Ferguson. Uh, well, I'm responsible for the name. Well, um, I mean, the whole gimmick. So, th so they had a gimmick for the guy, but not a name? They had a name, but no gimmick. And uh, obviously no storyline or, you know... Uh, no. Any, any kind of thought as to what his moves were going to be. But um, I think it might have been a last-minute substitution. How about uh, that, but 
Madison Square Garden was supposed to have been, I was dreaming this was going to be my, my big debut. You know, I was going to be sitting ringside. You know, my son brought his friends, got to go backstage, took his picture with Randy and and Virgil and, you know, everybody. And, and uh, so we get the tickets and like uh, our seats are two rows from the ceiling. <laughs> I've had that happen. And so I go, because I'd already told the kids, you know, oh, it's going to be great guys. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be ringside, you know, you know, Mr. Bartlett's a big shot of the WWF. And uh, I go down and go back to I said, Vince, I said, what's the story? I said, Bartlett, go back to your sheet. I said, well, I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to follow spot you all the way down to the ring. <laughs> it's like the walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> so I was supposed to interview Giant Gonzalez and his manager, Harvey Whippleman. Whippleman. Yes. Um, Giant Gonzalez, you know, by the way, that, that wasn't his real hair. I don't know if you know that. Thank um, you for uh, <laughs> yeah. and, um, Those weren't his real pubes? No. <laughs> wow. You know, it might have been. Uh, I guess that's true. We don't know what uh, was glued on there. So I did this, this you know, Whippleman was, John Gonzalez didn't speak, obviously, and, and Harvey Whippleman was talking about, you know, the scum of the earth where it lived in New York City. And, you know, I mean, I entered the ring to cacophonous booze and um uh, whippleman says oh the scum of humanity here in new york city and you know, all of you new yorkers are just trash and i do this big almost like patriotic speech about new york is the center of the freaking world and the greatest people in the world the greatest city in the world and giant gonzalez grabs me like on the shoulder and does a spock pinch and forces <laughs> me to my knees and uh I then did what was my patented finishing move. Um, I fled the ring in fear. Yes, um, yes. And uh, went, went back to my seat uh, and uh, got some looks from Sean's, you know, buddies. But, you know, it was what it was. It wasn't the triumphant uh, debut that I had anticipated. You know, Rob, you may not know this, but uh, I, in fact, wrestled for many, many years. And, really? Uh, yes, I did. And uh, what was your character? That <laughs> was that was me. It a was, short, angry man. Yeah, not very successful. Short, but anyway, yes, yeah, short, angry, uh, uh, you know, skinny guy. But anyway, the point of this is, you were not a wrestler, Rob. And no. uh, you know, you you uh, we just watched that confrontation when you were in the middle of Sherry and Luna Vachon. And I can uh -huh. tell you that uh, as a trained wrestler for a long, long time, I would not have wanted to be there. I would have been scared half to death with these two women beating the shit out of each other and me in the middle because they oh. were no joke. I, I I tugged the nugget when I was there. I mean, I was definitely – it was not – I was really, really scared. I mean, that, that wasn't acting. I, when they started going at each other, it was like, holy shit, what have I got myself into? And they'll hit you. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they were did. beating they the hell did. out of you. You know, McMahon just kind of subtly drops it in conversation in the pre pre show meeting. He says, Yeah, uh, Luna Machine, you're going to interview a little smart, and a sensational show, you're going to come out, they're going to get into a fight, you're going to try to break it up, and they're going to rip your clothes off. I was like, Oh, okay. And, you know, of course, I didn't know who Luna Vachon and, and Sensational Sherry were. And so I'm thinking, Huh, oh, two babes, cat fight, <laughs> tearing my clothes off. All right, just starting to get some perks here on the, this gig with the WWF. And then Luna Vachon came out, and it was, okay. And then <laughs> Sherry came out with, you know, her her triple Fs or whatever. I mean, that woman had a chest. And um, and they start going at it, and it was, it was I feared for my life. I, I, I definitely, I, I don't think I've ever been that scared. I mean, I had a pulmonary embolism on the streets of New York. I wasn't as scared as I was in the middle of Luna Vachon and Sensational Sherry. So let's talk a little bit about nowadays. What do you got going on? I'm doing a cameo, you know, like yeah. everybody uh, in show business. Yes, yes. One cameo. I know you do one. Brian, I do, so yes. I'll, 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 I'll hire you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had so much fun as doing these cameos, let me tell you. They are people, a lot of fun, aren't they? Yeah, yeah people, well, people just want me to bury their friends. And so they like put a list of stupid things their friends have done, and I just cut promos on them, and I get paid. It's the best job I think I've ever had. It's great. I mean, I I, I have broken broken up with people for people. Wow. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I haven't got that one yet. This girl, this girl wanted to break up with her boyfriend, and and hired me to do it. 
uh, be a cameo. And um, I've done, uh, you know, birthdays and anniversaries. So there was a, a character I used to do on, on IMS Blind, Mississippi White Boy, Pig Feets Dupree, a, a blues singer. So I'll write an original blues song for whoever the in- attendee is and, um, you know, get, get as much information. as. But it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a great, great chance to connect. So if any of you uh, old, original, OG, raw fans... Uh, if you you want to do something special for another OG Raw fan, you find me on Cameo. I'm just I'm kind of flopping around, you know. I uh, I did a, a gig the other night. It was a private party, which is, you know, stand up now. It's it's slowly coming back, but it's not where it was. Sure. Even when it was, um, I did a, a one man show up in Connecticut. I got I'm going up to my old alma mater, my old college, to teach some. Uh, teach some acting classes. Um, you know, did a little TV, did a movie part here and there. Just trying to lay low. Mm. You know, <laughs> we, to we've all been laying low for a while here. No, I know. Problems. It's true. It's very, very true. Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour. The Rob Bartlett Radio Comedy Hour. Thank you very much for yes. reminding me of that. The reason why I forget is because I, I, I'm due for a new episode. I, I don't think I've done a new episode in like a month. Um, that started out as uh, supposed to be a, a combination of like Saturday Night Live and the old Jack Benny radio shows where people would stand in front of the microphones with the scripts and do sketches and whatnot. And we had a whole troop of character you know, players. And, uh, you know, I write all the sketches with this uh, buddy of mine, uh, Andrew Smith, who used to be the head writer at SNL. And uh, we got the, the, the whole cast and we were doing it live on Facebook Um uh, video streaming, and then we would put the audio up on on uh, podcast, and then later on, this was at uh, WABC. They had a little performance space, and then they gave me an hour on Saturday nights uh, to do it for a while uh, from the studio. We weren't doing the video thing anymore, and then uh, they said they, they couldn't do that anymore because of the, something to do with the insurance. We couldn't have that many people in the studio. Some bullshit story. They basically just didn't want me you know, in the building anymore. And so uh, basically it's just me now doing it in my kitchen. Huh. But um, one of the episodes, I, I kind of go through a brief you know, history of my my time on Raw, you know, wrestling with myself. Uh but it's fun. I do some interviews, comedians, you know, Jackie the Joke Man, you know, old pals of mine. Um, and then usually a theme and do sketches and song parodies and shit like that. Just something to keep busy because, you know, there's just so much fucking Netflix you can watch. That's true. <laughs> so at The Robio, T-H-E-R-O-B-I-O, at The Robio is That's the, right. the Twitter handle. And looks like there you got links for everything. So I think that's the yeah, place folks uh, can go to. Robbie O Radio Comedy Hour on Instagram. And yep, yep. I'm still trying to figure out how to do TikTok so it looks like something. Dude. Uh, not just, you know. We're too old me. for this TikTok thing, Rob. I, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, I tried to do the dance from Peacemaker. I just can't. It's just, <laughs> at this age, with this body, I just can't do it. So, I have to, kudos to John Cena, man. <laughs> yeah, when you got a body like his, I mean, a lot of dances you can pull off. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, well, you know, but how great is he on that show, man? That is such Amazing. a great show. Best show. I love that show. Well, yeah, I was one of those. I binged that, and, and 1883 was my other guilty pleasure. Just uh, just for Sam Elliott's mustache. I think it, that sh- the mustache should actually get its own credit. It should. It should get like a Lifetime Achievement Award. What yes. Get, actually. <laughs> and Sam could accept it for his mustache. Yeah, on behalf of his mustache. So he lost a hair match. Came back with hair. We never saw him bald, and then decides to just shave his head. Do I have all this exactly right? Yeah. Now he wants to have his head shaved. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trini, stop that! No. no. God. Bro. I'm trying to kill the brain cells necessary <laughs> to tolerate the show. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.